has requested your services specifically. Talking Exorcist Vengeance. This one is directed by Scott Jeffrey and Rebecca Matthews. Uh, prolific B movie uh, directors, producers here in the UK. I have heard that they're actually pseudonyms for uh, an another person. I don't actually know that for sure, but it is credited at least to Scott Jeffries and Rebecca Matthews. Now, this one stars Robert Bronzy, who you may know as the look-alike for Charles Bronson and um, Robert Bronzy Kovac, to give him his full name, has been doing a few movies recently, uh, really kind of upping his profile as somewhat of a prolific B-movie uh, hero in his own right. A lot of them tend to emulate the kind of uh, the style of the Charles Bronson movies, for example, he's done like a movie called Death Kiss rather than Death Wish and things like that. Uh, a few kind of westerns and things. Although I don't really ever remember Charles Bronson doing an Exorcist style movie. So this is kind of maybe new territory for him. But I quite like uh, Robert Bronson actually, I have to say. Um, so what's the story? Now this is one of the interesting things about this movie. It kind of has uh, multiple facets in the story. The, the long and short of it is we have this possession in this kind of English manner. And uh, they call a kind of priest with an attitude, Robert Bronson's character to try and help them and we learn that obviously the, the maid may well be possessed but there may be other things kind of going on as well. So let's talk about what I think works with Exorcist Vengeance. I suspect this movie may have come out uh, this year because there was talk of an Exorcist reboot movie uh, being made and although I'm not sure if that's actually happening but I suspect this may be trying to get ahead of that. Uh, what can we say in the plus column? I think there are some ambitious storytelling elements here. As I say, the movie tries to have a somewhat multifaceted style of kind of storytelling here. The movie actually starts out very much like a kind of Death Wish movie with an action sequence, seeing uh, Robert Bronze's priest character uh, taking down a criminal with a gun. So he's kind of like a uh, vigilante style priest. And then we have the kind of a uh, more traditional style, exorcist style kind of portion. And then it kind of turns into a whodunit. So it kind of has these uh, different elements. So it is a somewhat kind of ambitious movie uh, in regards to, you know, having this kind of narrative, which is somewhat kind of sprawling. Uh, we'll come on to that again, because I don't think it's all necessarily good news for that. But I have to say, certainly it, it goes in maybe directions you won't think is somewhat typical of this kind of star movie. I have to say as well, I think the practical makeup was was reasonable in this film. Uh, I mean, it's not a particularly kind of gory movie in any sense of the word, but there are a few shots here where I think uh, the makeup is done effectively uh, and kind of looks pretty good. And it looks to me that they've used a couple of props from previous kind of Scott Jeffrey produced films. Um, you know, and having watched a lot of these, I kind of uh, start to recognise them. But nonetheless, I've got to say, I think the kind of the, on the practical side, for a low budget film, I think the actual um, makeup kind of side of things was was fine. Uh, the acting is a little bit of a mixed bag, but there are some performances where I think, you know, do a, a perfectly fine for this level of film. Nicola Wright seems to be in like every movie that I ever watch these days. And she's, she does so much, she's so experienced at this point. I think she does, uh, is naturally a pretty a pretty good actress, although, you know, I, I do feel these movies sometimes suffer from a clear lack of uh, um, practice and kind of like, you know, um, quick shoots and things like this, so it, they do come across sometimes a little bit unprepared, um, and it is the case of this one, but, you know, if I go to the acting, there are some performances here that are, are you know, are okay. And Bronzy, you know, he, he, he's a Hungarian actor, English is definitely not his first language, and if you've watched his films from when he first came on the scene till now, you, you, you see he is improving uh, with his kind of English, but it's still a very, very thick accent. But I actually think it does give him a kind of uh, a certain charm. Now, when Schwarzenegger came on the scene, he had obviously a very thick kind of Austrian accent, and it was kind of a point of difference, I have to say, and, and kind of made it more, more, of a, more of a unique character in some ways. And even though 
you know, the whole point of Robert Bromsey is he's not unique. He's tried to emulate the look of Charles Bronson. I still think it kind of uh, gives him a somewhat of a kind of a, in his own flavor to it, to a point. Okay, what well, doesn't work for me? So let me just kind of go back on some of the things I've, I've, I've kind of just said and kind of look at the other side of the coin here. Um, so the acting, as I've said, the um, it's a mixed bag. I think some of the some of the acting here is okay, but some of them it, it just seems like it's very unrehearsed. Um, you know, a, a, a quick shoot because they knock out so many of these films um, in quick succession. I almost feel like the actors turn up not knowing what the hell they're doing for the day, and then they just get some. I'll say this, say that, without any kind of like prep or um, you know practice runs and things like that, and they just kind of knock these films out in a weekend. So. And it does come across like that, and sometimes some actors worse than others. But you know, again, it, it does have this uh, this kind of uh, somewhat of an unrehearsed feel to it. The dialogue as well, yeah, you know, some of it is rather hokey. It must be said. The biggest thing for me, this film seemed incredibly messy in regards to its plot. And but when I was watching this, when I'm kind of doing, you know, watching a film to review, I'm somewhat kind of thinking as the film goes on, or you know. Maybe this, you know, this didn't work, and you know, as the film goes. And I remember thinking, like, 15 or so minutes into this film, so that beginning was really messy. Um, and then we kind of got to Bronze's character arriving at the house. But well, this is going to be the kind of the story main now. But it wasn't. It was kind of like it was still a messy film through the through the whole uh, the whole movie. It's a very very kind of um, messy convoluted plot that doesn't feel like it makes a lot of sense you know there's lots of things that here that are just done for convenience sake like oh the reason why they don't call the police when we have multiple kind of dead bodies on on, on the scene oh the church won't like it well the police aren't going to like it when you find out you've not called them and you found dead bodies let me just say that uh so yeah so kind of like here it's just a, a kind of a quick kind of plot to get from a to b and i think having these kind of these different elements Within the movie, um, I don't know. I don't know if it really worked to me. I think the the who done it element uh, again. I, I appreciate the fact that it's trying to do something different and have a little bit of a you know, it not just be a straight kind of possession movie. And I do appreciate that. But the problem is here. I feel every element is is somewhat underdeveloped because of it. And the fact that we have this gone, you know, this gun toting priest. You know, he kicks ass for the Lord. If you know that reference. Um, Again, it's a little underexplored, if that makes sense. That would have been an interesting concept in its kind of own right, and it's kind of there, but you feel there's not enough really kind of done with it. Um, there's some technical elements here that as well that I found uh, are problematic. I mean, Bronzy, as I say, his, uh, his accent and his English isn't the best. So he is a little hard to understand sometimes. And again, this comes down to doing multiple takes. If it's not coming across as clear, another take should have been done where, it, where we could provide a better line. But again, it just goes through that kind of like, oh, it's just shot quickly, you know, one, maybe two takes and that'll do. Uh, so there's that. But also, again, keeping with the kind of the voicing, they've kind of modulated the, uh, the possessed person's voice. I did not understand a word this, 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 demonic possessed person said because it's so heavily modulated I literally couldn't understand a word now I will say what this as a screener so it could be that the copy I had still maybe had some adjustments to, to make on it so that you know this this particular kind of critique may uh, may not be the, the finished in for this article but as I watched it I could not understand a word this possessed person was saying and they have a reasonable amount of dialogue but not literally not a word it was kind of it, it was completely inaudible just with too many kind of like um you know uh, modifications in regards to try and make this uh, this voice sound spooky so to me this movie was very disjointed i think it had some kind of mixed performance the narrative was kind of quite uh messy and didn't really have a particularly kind of good flow i think there was too many elements trying to kind of vie for um uh Kind of attention to the kind of the, the a storyline so to speak so i have to say this film to me was a, a missed opportunity and uh someone misguided um a three out of ten for me i didn't think it was a particularly enjoyable film if i'm being completely honest so have you seen it would you see it if you haven't leave me a comment and i'll look forward to you next time bye for now